our esteemed uh, video live stream production crew of one, Carl Pauls here, is also an employee of a, a fairly famous uh, advanced reactor little baby startup. He has gone through the uh, torturous exercise of getting a very brief presentation approved. So thank you, Carl. I can't thank you enough for all you've done. I am a software developer. I Believe it or not, I wasn't hired to TerraPower to do media. This is just a hobby. I started as a security server developer. It was a little thing called security information management. And I loved video games. I loved it so much, I really had to get into video games. I worked for some of the biggest game companies in the world, League of Legends, Riot Games, World of Warcraft, Blizzard Entertainment, and Wargaming. 2014, I saw a crazy video about thorium, and then I remembered, hey, I grew up outside Oak Ridge. My dad worked in nuclear. He helped put Watts Bar 2 in safe store. He helped project manage Satsup before they shut it down, before Seattle helped shut it down. Thank you, Seattle. And I knew a lot. I have an, an atomic merit badge, so I have a background that gave me all the tools to recognize, no, this is a good thing and not just thorium, but all nuclear is good. Then I got training with the amazing folks at Generation Atomic, and I, I think technically I still owe them a few homework assignments before I can officially call myself an Atomic Ambassador. And then uh, some amazing folks at the NAYGN, the Young Generation Nuclear of North America, started a committee to go to conferences like RE+, Clean Power America, and I joined their team and did a show, not unlike this, at uh, Pittsburgh CEM, uh, Clean Energy Ministerial. But I still had more. I kept talking to Nick Turan about what they were doing in software. And it turns out he needed someone with experience where I had experience. And so I applied, and I applied myself to the interview process. And now I'm applying myself to deliver at this job. And so. I am a software developer at TerraPower Digital Engineering, and that's what I can talk to you about today. Uh, I'm not a nuclear engineer. I don't have authority on many of the other subjects that I have in slides. I got all these slides approved for your benefit, but I can't really talk to any questions you might have unless it's about software. So uh, I also have some opinions about advocacy. I have opinions about how TerraPower Digital Engineering relates to the rest of the software industry. This is only that opinion. It relates directly from the, the knowledge I have as a software developer and not, you know, in general statements about other labor standards, other engineering standards. I did clear a whole lot of slides. You see 54 slides there. I'm not going to get to all of these. I think I'm just going to skip the natrium stuff because you all know that. And, uh, and, and I really can't answer many questions about it other than, you, you see I talked to Mark Werner. Go check that out on Your Environment Seattle on YouTube. All your questions that can be answered will be answered there, because I tried. Why did I leave my dream job in the video games industry? Well, they laid off a couple hundred thousand people. I had quit for unrelated reasons, but I did find myself in a very, very tight labor market where it would be a challenge to find new employment and I was just lucky to be at that inflection point in my career to join TerraPower. Uh, I found that for software, TerraPower has terrific PTO. You know, when you join a new software startup, you're lucky if you get two weeks of paid time off. Uh, sometimes we will get a few days extra around Christmas, but TerraPower has got a four week standard vacation, you know, 20 days standard PTO time, as well as some floating holidays there. Uh, and it is great. It's uh, fair pay, and coming from some of the larger video game companies, that's a compliment. It's, it's not below median or anything like that. You know, there are, of course, digital trading firms and crazy, crazy e-commerce retailer for the high, high power people, but uh, we're, we're not crazy about spending too much money. So they do, they do the wage analysis, they do fair pay analysis, and I think we're paid fairly well. We have short-term bonus, which is your normal Christmas bonus, but in lieu of equity, it, it, they have a compensation program that's long-term, that's averaged around three years, that is focused on the performance of the company in general. So you're not going to get a bunch of equity in this company that might not IPO for two decades 
I not sorry. I have no idea where the financials are with that. I have no idea if they will IPO. I can't really make a forward leading statement. I probably shouldn't. But this is they recognize that it's not a normal software startup, and so we're going to give you a long term benefit package that focuses on company performance, not tied to a stock. There's a great option for anyone who has spent a long time in tech and has a lot of cash saved up. It's called the Mega Backdoor Roth. I think technically they like to call it a after-tax contribution in-program transfer, but everyone knows that it's the Mega Backdoor Roth. No one understands the other term, and anyone who works at Amazon who understands that they have that benefit will recognize Mega Backdoor Roth. There's also a continuing education benefit. I think the last company I worked for that had that was Blizzard. Uh, so I'm glad to basically get a combination of some of the best benefits I've ever had. And of course, whereas in video games, I went from my childhood dream to eventually making in-app purchases and customer engagement strategies to ask them for more and more money, <laughs> kind of killed my dream. This time, my dream won't die unless the planet also dies, because we are making something that is going to save the planet. And I thank you all for contributing to that mission. You're here, you're, you're in this same mission with me. When I joined TerraPower, uh, I knew that there was going to be some expected practices, of course. Security is very important in entertainment. You can't be too careful when it comes to millions of players wanting to discover your secrets, and so you have to be confidential with your information as well. I saw more than one coworker fired from Blizzard for accidentally breaching confidentiality at a lunch or on a message board, and I expect to face the same challenges here. So believe it, I, I did my very best to get all of these slides cleared, multiple reviews, a lot to go through. <laughs> and I expected there would be some safety trainings. I did not expect that I would have to be fully trained on every variant of fire extinguisher every year, but that's what a nuclear company is like. So I appreciate it. Safety first. We're not all software people, uh, but I, I really have learned a lot about nuclear, working with other disciplines, working with project managers, mechanical engineers, chemical engineers, uh, process and quality people in the nuclear industry is great. Uh, I've also been able to bring a, two decades of experience in the software industry and incorporate some of these practices into the platform that I'm building. No matter how much you know about nuclear, you can always learn more. I was really fascinated to finally join a social experience after work at one TerraPower um, you know, celebration of our construction permit. We had a little get together for that. And everyone has their own specialty. No one knows everything, and that's a strength in gathering so many people who know so much. So again, thanks for joining a wonderful conference like Thorium Energy Alliance Conference. And it is a government contract. Not at all like entertainment. It's kind of similar to contracting. You gotta be a little careful with your time. Make sure you don't lose track of what you're doing. Mark down when you go on break, of course. And we can't hide anything fun in the software. There's no murlocs here and there creeping out from under the bushes. It's, it's very serious stuff. It is audited. We're cost aware. You know, we keep bringing in government dollars and we want to spend that money wisely. Of course, because it's government work uh, for, for the software side, for full-time employees, there's no expected overtime, which is a welcome reprieve from entertainment. But of course, uh, HR reminded me to say, yes, we do have hourly workers and we have deadlines and we're happy to pay them overtime uh, when it's allocated. A surprise is I, I actually can't get paid for lobbying. I can maybe get professional development for this speech. I am talking about TerraPower, but for lobbying to government officials, we have a special code for that. It's called unallowable. It is something that is not allowed to be put into a government contract reimbursement. So there's no malarkey. Uh, just a sampling of some TerraPower careers. Because we're not just hiring uh, software developers, we are hiring everyone. We have a construction permit filed, and we need all of your help. Go check out terrapower.com careers. Now, digital engineering, this is where we are trying to do our best to modernize the permitting and construction and quality project. Uh, if you saw me speak in Albuquerque, I talked about how my dad was writing software in COBOL to manage contracts. Uh, I think that I've gone a little bit of an upgrade from that process, hopefully a little more user-friendly at least. And so here are the products. Army is our open source reactor modeling system. Atom is for information management. 
And we also have a great deal of computational environments to support. We're going to definitely be working on digital twin stuff. Everyone's talking about digital twins, but Nick likes to point out that's been done a million times. It's not that surprising how software and a reactor system are going to integrate. Atom is the project I work on, and here is the tech stack. Nick was very eager to get this approved because, of course, we are looking for talented folks who work in Django, especially Django REST framework, and all of these constituent libraries. Front end, we've got Vue 3, which is sort of a new front end framework that's not too dissimilar from React. For the component models that make that visually easier to work with and a little visually more appearing, that's Quasar. The last one on the list there, Cypress, that is an integration testing framework, uh, a little bit like WebDriver. You might have heard the term WebDriver, it boots up Chrome or another web browser technology and automatically goes through the process of executing the software. Like many of you here, I'm also an advocate and I have learned something about moving into the industry. You're no longer sort of this magical, mysterious creature is a person who loves nuclear but doesn't work in nuclear because eventually we all find our way into a job like this. And so you're not quite as novel. Uh, DOE, in fact, invited me to speak at a, uh, a CEM side event, specifically me because I was not in the industry and they wanted that perspective. I guess I won't get that again. There are challenges when I had to, for example, give this talk. We had a lot of review. There are restrictions. You, you can't professionally embarrass your employer. You can't bad talk your investors. Uh, and so there's just a few restrictions on what I can say. And I think because people are terrified of all the legalese and all the review and all of the pressure to maintain your professional posture, they hesitate to participate in public review, in talking to the government. And I think I have a solution to that, and that is our wonderful volunteer organizations. Generation Atomic has a great organization that you can use as a vehicle for your advocacy. They can train you. And I am advocating internally for more people to be involved through NAYGN or Generation Atomic to be advocates. And I think I'm seeing some support there. So the rest of this is less opinion, and I'm going to do a lot less speculation uh, and just go through the slides. Uh, you may have heard of TerraPower Isotope. We are shipping isotopes to uh, manufacturing partners. This is straight from the fact. And I think you've seen this slide before. Uh, targeted alpha therapy is really amazing stuff, and it shows the best application of the use of nuclear materials that we could possibly see. This is sort of the overview of some things that were cut, and we have a great deal of expertise in executing on these goals. I've been pretty impressed with the people that I met who joined TerraPower before I did, ex-Navy folks, Navy nukes, who did go, get into TerraPower and are working on stuff like, like TerraPower isotopes. This is the decay chain and the sourcing of the parent isotope for the potential treatment. Our product is the actinium, and we were going to work with pharmaceutical companies to make a constituent product as a result of that partnership with the pharmaceutical industry. These slides were previously shared at the University of Wisconsin, uh, and of course I got them cleared specifically so that John and Thorium Energy Alliance could have access to them. So this one was uh, previously cleared to talk to the GAIN organization, and this is where we talk about digital engineering's uh, capabilities in general. Uh, Army, again, is sort of our orchestration system that's been open sourced. You could go right there on GitHub and download it. This is the system we use to uh, drive some of our reactor simulations. I'm actually not involved in the Army development. It's very, very specialized software for someone who knows a lot more about sciences than I do. So there's a bit of a slideshow. But if you're a nuclear engineer, I hope you enjoy it. The code in the top right is Python. Might be familiar if you know NumPy. And Nick even let his own personal uh, GitHub address sneak in there. So part of the thing slash ACE for this one. This is the one that I love to talk about. This is Atom. This is the software that I help produce, I help maintain and add new features to. The orchestration layer for information, for data about documents, about decisions, parameters, all of the details that we are going into when we approach construction of this natrium plant in Kimmerer, Wyoming. The one thing here that's out of domain for me personally is that central data store. 
qualified product that the NRC gets involved in because it deals with access to that data at rest and the security of that data at rest and as well the reliability of that data at rest. And so we choose to buy rather than build that very, very precise piece of work. Everything else needs to move much, much faster. We have new features that we're asked to make all the time. We have some flexibility and some earned value, some demonstrated value when we execute on new features that our engineers need very, very quickly. Sort of the organization of data is the plant breakdown structure or master system list. Each of these things here, and these are fictitious examples from our, our QA and developer instance. We can drill down those MSL items, and in this case, the requirements system, where we have broken down requirements pertaining to this fictitious fuel handling system, uh, showing plant parameters, and on the very left of that box at the bottom, you see the MSL breakdown again, RCC, RES, HRS, and that's the relationship of parameters to each of the systems they relate to. What you're looking at here is basically when the decision is made on any part of the system, we have ability to trace around it. Uh, there's also some other additional features here, but I'm running out of time. We do gate access to files, and so we have a way of adding people to the system and gating access to these files that are in secure storage. And open items is one of the biggest used features right now. It's how we track things that prevent a, a document from being able to go to implementation. Here's an example of workflows. That's the Django finite state machine dependency that I talked about earlier. And so we use that to literally express procedure as code. It's a very, very important part of the system. In summary, please get a job in nuclear. It is well worth your time. It will help save the planet. It will help make plentiful energy a reality for everyone. In terrapower.com, the website, you'll find a careers section. Thank you. There may be one or two questions, but only about software, so it might be the wrong crowd. My startup is actually focused on proving actions that machines take, and we use a blockchain. So I wanted to ask, what is your threat model? Kind of in layman terms, how paranoid are you guys? Is it like nation state? Is it insider job? Is it backdoors and cryptographic curves? Like how paranoid are you guys in the software domains for reactors? Our, our threat model is what is the best practice of the industry? Which so, is probably not very good, I'd imagine. Well, okay, best practice. So more like all of the above. Okay. Yeah. No offense on that, by the all way. All right. <laughs> How much of your work do you do uh, inside of cloud resources versus your internal hardware? We, of course, need to be very careful about nation state actors and, and you know, non-disclosures. So like Google Drive is blocked. As a software developer, in my personal experience, there is a system called GovCloud. Uh, Microsoft, Amazon, among others, have qualified environments to deal with export-restricted information, and that's what I'd recommend if you're looking to implement something like that. Very good. Thank you.